Hello and welcome back to another video. This is the third part of my Hunyuan video series, and today we will be learning how to do image to video, which means we provide an image, and then that acts as the base image for our video. This is probably one of those lessons where things go from simple to complex, so make sure to follow the video without skipping anything. Now there are some files to download and some things to set up. First you need to download the Leap Fusion LoRa. This LoRa helps in the image to image generations. Go to the link down below and download this Leap Fusion LoRa. Make sure to download the 544p version to get good quality. Next, you need to download the VAE. This is the same VAE we used in our previous video, so if you haven't downloaded it, download it again. Remember, this is the Kijai VAE, so rename it if you want to. Next, you can see I'm no longer using the model we have used in our previous videos. Now, there is no problem using the same model, but since this is a fast video model, it is going to produce a lot of fragments when used with this workflow. So you will need to download the original BF16 or FP8 weights that should specifically be used in Kijai nodes. To do this, go to the Civit AI page in the link down below and make sure to click the Kijai Diffusion BF16 tab, or you can use the FP8 version as well. Remember, any model other than this is not going to work. Click download and place it in the diffusion models directory. No, we're not done yet. There is one more file. We need the workflow. For this, go to the GitHub page I provided and then click on the Leap Fusion image to video JSON file right here. There should be a download option on top. And now we're finally set up. Drag and drop the workflow to comfy UI and you should get something like this minus the image. Now go to each node and load the appropriate files. The Leap Fusion file for the LoRa, the new VAE file for the VAE, the new BF16 or FP8 version to the model, and then load an image. You can see there is a resize box right here. That will automatically resize your image. Make sure to disable cropping if you don't want your image cropped. Next, change the frame rate to something low. Remember, higher frame rates means more memory. And remember how we calculate the duration of the video. It's the number of frames divided by frames per second. Then the most important setting is to enable VAE tiling. Without this, you're definitely going to run into out of memory errors. You can keep the other settings the same. Finally, write the prompt you want, which is obviously going to be based on your image, then hit the Q button. There you go. We've got a decent video for it, but you can see how it is mostly still Yes, there is movement, but there isn't enough movement. For example, she isn't turning her head towards the camera. This is because the duration we set in our video is very low. We're only getting two seconds of video, and that is not enough to do some major movement. How about we try a different image? For my second image, I select an image that already has some motion in it. You can see she's already walking. Now I'll change the size because we don't want this stretched. Next, I will write my prompt, and then I will change the seed to randomize. I think you know by now what a seed is. It's a unique label assigned to any generation, and when the seed is the same, it is going to try to look like our previous generation. I don't want that, so I set that to randomize and also type a random number. And there you go. You can see there is movement, like the sand moving, but this time you can see a slight movement towards the end. Now let me change another few settings. I'm going to keep the same image, but this time I'll increase the duration by increasing the total number of frames. Then I'll also increase the flow shift value right here. Flow shift, according to my tests, helps add more motion to the image. It is something very useful when you are using a base image and the video has very little movement. Hit the Q again and there you go. Now you can see this image has much more motion. So the key here is how the duration and the flow shift affects how much motion gets added to your image. Obviously, a 10 second video with these same settings would have much more motion. But there is a limit to which my VGA can handle. Once again, this is not without its limits. You can see the images in these last few frames have a bit of a different face than the base image. Obviously, as we tweak these values, the image is also going to change a little, so make sure to play around with those values. So that is it for this tutorial. In the coming tutorials, I'll be trying to do some practical stuff, like recreating a scene from Arcan, or using multiple LoRa's to manipulate our image. So make sure to subscribe for more content, and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.